I gotta get one of you in front of me. View my one. YouTube a a identity. Doodle. That one doesn't look a bandage. Oh. I wonder if they just closed. No, that's it. Huh. I don't know. It's fucking cool. One love, one heart. Let's get together and fill all that. Sorry, I'm trying to offend you guys as most. I was going there, but then I changed my mind when I saw some dogs. Yum. It's actually super impressive. It's like a skull on a. Oh, that's cool. Whoa. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Echo Bricks video, specifically a vlog. Sorry I haven't been posting in a little while, I'm not going to go too deep into that, I've just been really busy having like no time to myself, basically just like get home, clean, go to sleep, and then just like, hmm. Well, but anyways, let's get into the video. Anyways, uh, I, it was just my birthday th uh, this weekend, or last weekend, I went and at uh, Treasure Island and saw the Mustier with all my family. It was really fun. And yeah, let's get into like some vlogs. Like, and I'll show you guys some vlog footage. Now that you guys just saw the vlog fo uh, footage of like uh, me and my family walking around in like the Art Street area. It's not necessarily downtown. It's close to downtown Las Vegas, but not exactly. But let's get into some stuff I got. So this was more of an early birthday present. But anyways, it was the Dark Trooper helmet. It's a really cool set. I'm going to do a full review on that. Probably going to be posted this week. Um, it was a really nice build. It was my first 18 plus set. It's really cool. The only thing that annoyed me is how flimsy this jaw part can be. But anyways, got that. It's really cool. I'll go into the full review for that. And then I also got the Bad Batch Shock Trooper. Uh, I'll open that up in a second along with some other things, but one of the coolest presents I got, definitely the most expensive, would be the K-Bar, the knife. Let's open it up. Ooh. Has um, but I'll just do a full review of the K-Bar knife just right now since you guys probably don't want that on the main channel. This is really nice. So it's like, has a synthetic guard. If you guys do want a full video, let me know. Um... Yeah, it was made in uh, Olean, Nor New York, Blade USA, right there. Has a really nice, cool thing about it. And then, here's the sheath. Sheath. You can just go right in. See how well that works. Nice clip, you can put it around your belt or onto your backpack or something. Then here's like a little bio thing. Okay, Legend of the K-Bar. Oh, I guess we'll read that. And my Dark Trooper helmet broke. How kind you are to me, helmet. And there's my light. Okay. Okay, anyways, let's get back into it. Okay, so here's, like, the Legend of the K-Bar. The K-Bar. Okay, it says, At the start of World War II, for the need of quickly fighting utility knife, the was quickly discovered working in the United States uh, Marine Corps, uh, the Court Masters Union... Uh, currently present, Dan uh, Danforth Brown helped to develop the um, one one two nine twelve CT fighting utility knife. The <laughs> one two nineteen C uh, C two was quickly adopted and uh, pushed by the production of nineteen forty two. The war grew in scale and demand for the uh, one one thousand twelve CT uh, C two. Um, outspace the production for the uh, number of companies produce the knife, including the Union Out, Out Cutlery, uh, Cutlery Company of uh, Olean, New York. The Union Cutlery marked the fighting knife, so, uh, utility knives K-Bar, as a mark that would become legendary around the, around the globe. globe. <laughs> Union cu Cutlery did not produce the most... Uh, K bars, but according to the troops, the field was produced quickly. Their weapon version of the fighting utility knives all around the utility knives began 
referred as the K-Bars by soldiers, sailors, and marines, becoming a part of World War II in the vernacular of phrases of Sanafu. The world killery was here. Union uh, cutlery knives were used in the Marines, Corps, uh, U.S. Army, uh, U.S. Navy, and underwater demolition teams. During World War II, these uh, models did not include the 1219C2 uh, fighting utility knife was Mark One and uh, TL29 electronics knife was addition to countless private pur purchases in the Union Century Hunt knives and protect knives. Uh, such abundance of 1219C2 uh, fighting utility knives made in World War II at the Union Cutlery um, changed its name until the K-Bar in 1952 did not produce another until the mid-70s. Uh, surplus knives from World War II could go and reissue the American troops, uh, the Korea, the Vietnam. Placing the number of these knives out was a different war across decades. The 1219C2 was back in production by the K-Bar in the mid-70s as a limited edition uh, Quapam Rotive. The Quapam Rotive was proved popular. The knife was brought back at full production in the original World War II blueprints, which had been housed as a K-Bar since 1942. Since re uh, reintroduction, the K-Bar has served alongside American troops and our allies around the country is a staple of the American history today. And then on the back, it looks like it has, like, how to keep it, like, intact and shape, but I'm not going to go into detail of that. Huh. Little knife right there. Little focus. Focus? Okay. Don't mind that, but, um, yeah, the K-Bar, it's really nice. I actually forge knives myself, so I will go into a little detail. So, this is not, like, grinded out or anything. This is, like, the whole base metal, and this was just forged. The tip was forged completely, and as a part of it, it's not like they used a grinder to grind it down to the shape. It is completely hand-forged like that. And then it also uh, has a recurve down for, like, more mobility. And if you get a one that's serrated, that would be better for wood chopping. And you can see the metal goes all the way through to the tang right there. And you can see it stuck out right there. But a lot of commonly have, um... Skull crushers, like on the end right here, instead, so you can't see that. But um, they most commonly use synthetic mil, uh, uh, synthetic, uh, synthetic materials nowadays. But they used to use like more woods, but that was proven that it would rot away in salt water in combat. But anyways, the knife was made in New York, made in U.S. of course, and then the sheath is made in Mexico. But anyways, that's a quick review. Of the K bar. Let's go into other stuff. Might as well just open this clone trooper now that I have a knife. Of course, go through the bottom. Oh wow, that cuts really nice. And then, okay, do you like me, box? No. Okay. Uh, this I think pretty sure this is still in stock on Walmart.com if you still haven't got one of these guys. And I'm considering maybe getting another one. There we go. Whoa. And I'll go into a full review of this guy. Anyways, let's move on to some more stuff. Okay, after playing around with this guy, this is officially one of my favorite figures. I love the new clone body and also uh, the look of the shock trooper. I think I might do what Lucas Monster did and take off the pauldron for just like a normal grunt or whatever. But anyways, let's look at some other stuff. Okay, anyways, I got the first three editions of the new 52 Batman. So uh, for first, of course, you got uh, the Court of Owls, which is the very first new 52 Batman comic. And then you got the City of Owls, which is the next one after that, and there goes my light again. Okay, now that my light's back, and then it has uh, City of Owls, and then one of my personal favorites, I haven't, uh, I've only read Endgame, and also I've heard a lot about Chaos, get off me. Sorry, that's my cat. Um, Batman Death of the Family is one of the highly, uh, highest rated uh, graphic novels ever. I'm going to start reading these ones today. And I also recently got Flashpoint along with that. Since I want to go back into New 52, since I realized how much a failure Rebirth was, 
um, compared to it, and I'm really not into detective comics at this moment, uh, or, like, any other modern ones. I mean, like, the newest comic that I'm, I've read is, uh, probably Batman Three Jokers, which is, like, one of the greatest graphic novels I've ever read, and I totally recommend you go read it. But, anyways, uh, speaking of the Three Jokers, <laughs> I just got this Joker, like, a day or two ago. Okay. Okay. But anyways, I got this Joker just a day or two ago, and I need a better tripod. And I really love this Joker. It's the clown uh, Joker. And uh, just today, I actually got it as a little late of a birthday present I ha got. Oh, uh, and behold. Where is it? There. Mm. I got Red Hood. Let's open it up right now. I'm so excited to open this up. But yeah, this is Red Hood from the Three Jokers. Let's just slice right in. Why am I using my K bar? Because I can't find my pocket knife. Okay, open it up. Dang. But I'm getting into DC Multiverse. I'm going to be flat broke eventually. From the Black Series DC Multiverse. Well, only a select few in DC Multiverse. Well, I mean, G.I. Joe's the only one that I'll just get any figure. Well, toe joints. Any joint. Evolve from a military knife just to open faction action figures. It's really cool how McFarlane poses the figures in the package, and it's like, I mean, like, not in a crazy way, but, and then he only comes with one accessory, it's kind of sad. It's way scaled down from Joker's crowbar, like, I'll show you a comparison really quick once I get this out, because it's more of a realistic crowbar, while Joker's is a lot different, like, I'll just do a quick comparison to crowbars, because why not, and there it goes, yay. <laughs> Okay, anyways, I cannot find that. I'll do that in the actual review. And oh my god, this man is Bigfoot. That kind of bothers me slightly. Okay. Interesting. Kind of weird in a way. Hmm. Well, um, I'll go and record that review right now. So, if there's any more vlogs that I get before I post this, that will be right now. If not, um, I'll just record an intro. Never mind. Okay. Okay, guys, I got a, I got a package. Let's open it up. If I can, I'm outside since just, like, taking some photography pics. If you want to see the toy photography I do, um, go check out my Instagram. The link down below. This will probably be in this week's vlog, but... Yeah, go check out my Instagram. Oh, yes, I think I know what it is. I'm going to do a review on this today. Oh, my God. Oh, it looks so good. I'm going to do probably some weathering on this because I just... Why not? Maybe I'll do a video on weathering and stuff. But, yeah. Excited for this figure. Let's do a review. Well, not in this video, but go check out the review video when it comes out. Might as well open this figure in this vlog, sorry, for the messy workspace. This is out in my living room. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing, uh, building props for photography. Once again, go check that out. My photography, this is very difficult. Why? How do TikTokers do this? I mean, I used to go on TikTok, but not really no more. I think I might start up another TikTok for, like, channel? I don't know. Oh, that gaming great sticker. Probably be smarter if I used a tripod, but like... Huh. 
You could, you could technically do like a normal 501st Trooper if you really wanted to. But yeah, go check out the review for this. A great figure so far.